Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Post Review. I am here joined by Mr. Patrick Childress, the Director of Strategic Development of BCOS, and Mr. Derek, Derek A. Gregory, the founder of Paradigm Mining and Consulting. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. So, starting off, today's topic is BCOS. Mm -hmm. So simply put, what do you guys do? BCOS is a full ecosystem exchange that ranges from mining through a spot marketplace, through derivatives, through clearing. Our founder has coined the term a full stack offering, mm -hmm. but we're a fully diverse group building institutional caliber marketplaces to be able to attract institutional users and capital and proprietary trading capital so we can turn this into a marketplace that's institutionally accepted. So one of the major products that you guys are putting out is the derivatives exchange, right? The derivatives so exchange. Could you elaborate further on the services sure. that you guys provide when it comes to derivatives? Sure. So mining and spot are pretty straightforward, I think, to most folks who understand cryptocurrencies. We are building a, a, a U.S. CFTC licensed derivatives exchange in the United States. That exchange will have a designation called a designated contract market. Mm -hmm. It's a DCM application, and that sits alongside a clearinghouse, which will be a DCO application to run the clearing organization. The clearinghouse will have institutional participation from folks like Goldman Sachs and Sockgen and those kinds of folks mm -hmm. who are trying to find an institutional caliber offering that they can get behind. But our DCM will be the same type of a license that the Chicago Mercantile Exchange or Chicago Board of Trade has in the United States. And our clearinghouse will clear both our products and ultimately we will open clearing up to clearing a variety of other exchanges that want to join our platform. An example of that in the United States is in the, in the equity options business, the Chicago Board Options Exchange was 85% of the options business in the middle 1980s, and uh, they, they had what they call the Options Clearing Corporation. The OCC is a clearing entity like our clearinghouse that lives alongside the exchange, but the OCC, the Options Clearing Corp today, clears NASDAQ, they clear the Chicago Board Options Exchange, they clear the Boston Options Exchange, so they clear a number of alternative venues. Our clearinghouse will ultimately do the same thing. It will be our clearinghouse that will be partially owned by us and partially owned by the institutional partners. And then we will open that clearing up to other exchanges that want to be able to do institutional caliber clearing. So when it comes to derivatives exchange, uh, legal issues cannot be overlooked. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, the derivatives exchange for BCOS hasn't been released yet. Mm -hmm. But you guys did file a uh, application to the CFTC. Yes, we did. So I want to ask you, how is it coming along and maybe possibly the launch date of the uh, platform? Sure. Maybe? Both those applications got approved and accepted into the record in, I believe, the second quarter of this year. Mm -hmm. it's, it, we work so hard, it, life's kind of a blur in terms of a timeline. But those are now put on stay with the CFTC. So the CFTC either accepts your application or says it's not adequate, go away and come back, refile. <laughs> and an example of that is they did that with the Eris Exchange recently. Eris has had some announcements about capital. But what happened is I, we believe Eris's application got rejected by the CFTC to make some improvements and come back. Our applications are both accepted. They essentially sit on, in a status they call on stay with the CFTC. They're on the shelf pending our completing the B round, which we're currently raising to capitalize the company and show the operating capital we need to get into business. So NASDAQ recently launched news to release their futures product in the coming February. They did. So you guys plan to make fierce competition with NASDAQ or how's it coming along? How's the relationship? Well, we're actually very close to the NASDAQ guys and our CEO has put the NASDAQ market technology called the OMX platform mm -hmm. into a variety of exchanges mainly out in Asia. He put it into the Hong Kong Exchange as the CEO of the Hong Kong Futures Exchange. Mm -hmm. He put it into the Thailand Exchange when they did the Thai Exchange. He put it in in Pakistan. And so we're actually working very closely with NASDAQ from a technology and strategic standpoint. But the other thing that's a reality is, um, just like they have the OEX product, the, the, which is the equivalent of the, of the COSPI contract out here, and they have the S&P 500 at the Mercantile Exchange, the OEX at the CBOE, that, that product offering enables arbitrage opportunity for traders. So traders love seeing two good venues to trade in because they'll trade against both. It's, it's just more choices, right? Well, and it creates arbitrage, differences in the pricing movement or the contract specs might be different, mm -hmm. highly correlated but different, and they, they can capitalize on those margins. Mm -hmm. So it's actually complementary. Mm -hmm. So uh, when it comes to, well, you've explained about the system or the uh, institutional part of the mm -hmm. uh, exchange, but then from the uh, daily retail users like myself who are not a financial expert, I really can't explain how the derivatives exchange works or not. But mm -hmm. So could you simply explain how the derivatives exchange could benefit in uh, yeah. maybe uh, risking, uh, managing my risks or uh, mm -hmm. maybe increasing my profit maybe? So managing risks is very simple. I mean, if you're a, if you're a I'll use an example with corn, if you're a farmer and you've got a million bushels of corn in the field mm -hmm. and you've got $4 in costs in them, 
but the contract for March delivery, four months out, is trading at four dollars and fifty cents. Mm -hmm. You can agree to make delivery of your million bushels of corn at four dollars and fifty cents and lock in that fifty cents profit for yourself. Mm -hmm. So that is the same way futures will work in, in, in cryptocurrencies. Normally what people are doing though is affecting a hedge from downside risk, mm -hmm. but we'll also have options and we'll have swaps and a variety of instruments that are available to affect the strategies that people want to use in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So you guys are here in Korea, then mm -hmm. uh, it must be because you guys are looking for something here in Korea, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So I have to ask you, what are you guys looking for here? Any uh, p potentials, maybe growing potential, especially in the derivatives market? Yeah, there's, there's, there, I think that falls into three categories for us. We were out for Block Soul here recently, mm -hmm. um, but we have some long ties to some of your senior regulatory officials and exchange operators here. So one of the guys, the guy who was very instrumental in putting the KRX together and the Cospi contract, and he's both an advisor to some large proprietary trading firms, but just a long-term friend of our family, for lack of a better term. He and our CEO, Fred Greed, and the CEO of the Taiwan Exchange are all very close and peers in the industry. So that's one reason why I come out to Korea. A second reason is we're raising capital. We've got some folks out here that we're currently talking to about potential investment and strategic partnering. Mm -hmm. And then the third is you've got, the, you've got the, the, the onset of the new blockchain associations and we really think there's an opportunity we're finding throughout Asia and some of the larger exchanges in both Hong Kong um, in China well, not, not as much in Taipei, but in, in uh, Singapore, these folks want us to build our regulated environment in the United States and then to come out to Asia and open partner exchanges mm -hmm. that they can participate in on a joint venture basis. So all of those things are the reason why we've come out. Derek, would you care to add to that? Um, basically, just what Patrick was saying was, you know, we would like to uh, meet with some of the high, higher volume exchanges, especially since a lot of the volume is here in Korea and um, to see about partnerships because we have uh, you know, a regulated entity where these, um, just for example, like uh, Upbit or, um, or Bitthumb, they, they have a lot of the access to the retail investors. So possibly getting a partnership to marry the two together. So Marrying can... retail liquidity with institutional caliber liquidity, we think that makes for a much more robust marketplace. Because we can navigate the, the regulatory space where they can more focus on the, on the retail. Liquidity side. will be far more significant and you won't be able to manipulate the markets as much with small order flow. We think that makes for a more stable environment. Now, this question is for you, Derek. Yes. You are a mining uh, expert in the field of mining, right? Correct. So, uh, simply, I would simply like to ask you, how's the mining business? Because it's a harsh bear market right now. Yeah, well, the mining's tough and uh, <laughs> I guess uh, one of the you know main factors was how much you're getting your electricity for, um, and then also keeping up with uh, the the um, on the mining equipment. So you know about you have about a year's time on a on a box before they come out with a higher hashing power. Mm -hmm. um, but as we were speaking before, there um, I am seeing or we're seeing interest on the OTC side, where people will pay a premium for freshly minted coins. Really, and they just they would just pay more because it's like freshly minted? Because it's a clean coin, mm -hmm. and the provenance of ownership has not been contaminated in any way. It's like, uh, you know, getting a $100 bill straight off the press versus a uh, crumpled up one that, you know, from it's, It just feels good, ago. right? <laughs> yeah, it just feels good. <laughs> and, um, and mining, obviously, is a very important part of proof of work mm -hmm. coins. Bitcoin, um, you know, Dash, Decred. Um, Saya, these are some of the coins that, that, I'm, that I mine. But then when it comes to the profit itself, the break even point of Bitcoin mining is suggested to be around $6,000, but nowadays yes. one Bitcoin costs are like what, like 3.5 grand or something, so? Yeah, so I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough business and I think that um, you just have to look at what, what the price is of, of, of how much you're paying to mine a Bitcoin at the end of the year. Now the facility itself, uh, it's yes. located in Virginia Beach, like Virginia Beach, Virginia, and, yes. Uh, I saw a news article claiming that the community people living in Virginia Beach are complaining about the mining facility being too loud. There's so, no question about that. Mm -hmm. and there have been some articles about it, and I think there's even been some news clips on the news about it. Mm -hmm. um, my sense is that they had the permitting done through the local officials to put that in. Mm -hmm. There's always upcry. I mean, there's always a number of divergent factors that go into these things. Mm -hmm. When I looked at the stuff that went on with that lady, and, and the people that live there, I could certainly see how they lived next to what was a warehouse that now is putting off a lot of noise relative to the transformers they're running. So I guess I understand that that's a real concern for them. 
I would have to say I don't think at any time we'd do anything that wasn't kosher relative to the licensing and the laws you have. So it's certainly a consequence. I guess I'm not sure what the how to mitigate the reality there, but there's no question that went on and that it's certainly everybody has their own purview. But we certainly didn't do what we did without getting the approval of the regulator or the uh, the the government Local officials in that area to get the licensing and to put the facility up. And I think they weighed a lot of that based on the jobs that were created and those types of things when they look at that in the community. I think we even got a partial grant from the community to put the facility in. Mm -hmm. So it's always unfortunate, and I'm a middle child, I kind of tend to look at both sides. But um, yeah, it's an unfortunate situation, I think, down there from that aspect. Moving on to a more uh, market perspective, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The crypto market is suffering from a harsh bear market right now. All the projects, mm -hmm. all the companies are suffering. So uh, we're reaching the end of our interview, but then mm -hmm. as a last comment, could you care to share the market prospect that you guys have on the crypto industry? I believe at some point in the future that we will test the all-time high again and mm -hmm. and go higher. But, uh, you know, that could be a year or two. And I don't really know what to tell the people that are kind of caught in the wave right now. I would just say, don't sell at the bottom. <laughs> Hodl, um, you know, uh, and, and, uh, and to... Uh, and to, I, you know, I, I don't really give, I don't really give advice as to for when people should buy, but, uh, but, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm positive that that will will be okay in the in the long run, or else I I wouldn't be doing. And this. And I've been observing this market for a while, and one of the things that I'm struck by is how real this market is in terms of how markets react to a variety of phenomenon. Bear markets are always tough in any market. This market's no different. Um, I would say. Markets do tend to wash week longs out before they ever go higher. So, but this market looks very real to me. It trades a lot like a real market. I look at the charts every day. I look at the flows of order volumes. This market has all the trappings of, a, of what a regular market is. Markets have bear markets and bull markets. Both the bull market and the bear market look, look rationally to me like any other market that has had that activity. You can look at cotton, you can look at gold, you can look at copper, and they look exactly, the charts look exactly like that. Well, that is all the questions we have today. Thank right. you so much for your yeah, time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very guys. much. Yep. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Patrick Childress, the Director of Strategic Developments of BCOS, and Mr. Derek A. Gregory, the founder of Paradigm Mining and Consulting. Thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank you.